Now, I know some of you guys are thinking, Antonio, what type of drugs are you smoking? People smell. Men stink. Just the other day, I've got six feet of distance between me and another guy in line and his BO just about knocked me out. So, with that being the case, why in the world would I recommend that men mm. stop using deodorant? Guys, that's not what I'm saying. But what I do know is since the age of 12, I've been told to wear deodorant because you stink. Yet, I've never really asked the question, do I truly actually smell? So, how did this video come about? How did I decide not to wear deodorant for a year? Well, there's actually a pretty interesting story behind it. One of you guys just over a year ago asked me the question, Antonio, what is the best deodorant? Seemed like a pretty simple question. Me being me, I went out and bought like 35 different deodorant types. Yeah, I bought a lot of deodorant. And I started testing them. I wanted to see which one performed the best, which one actually did what it said it was going to do. Now, as I was doing all this research, I learned there's a lot of things in these deodorants that I probably don't want to be putting on my body that I have for over the last 20 years. First up, we've got aluminum. What does aluminum and all these aluminum products that you will see in most antiperspirants, what are they doing? They are physically going into your pores and they are blocking the release of sweat. Now, if you think about this, this is kind of messed up because sweat is a natural thing that our body does to get rid of toxins and other things we need to get out of our body to help cool us down. It's a natural body phenomenon. And let's talk about that aluminum. Aluminum is a dangerous heavy metal that's been linked to Alzheimer's and different types of cancers. Now, you're putting this on an area of the body that absorbs a number of things. So, you've got to wonder, is this actually good for your health? Now, to be fair, antiperspirants and deodorants have never been conclusively linked to any illnesses. That being said, would you drink a glass of water that could possibly or possibly not cause cancer? And seriously, who needs their armpits to stop working for 72 hours? The point I'm making, gents, is to read what you're putting onto your skin. Your skin is like a sponge. It will absorb what you put on it. So, you want to make sure there's no parabens, there's no triclosan, nothing that is going to be bad for your body. Now, what about natural deodorants? How are these different than the antiperspirants? So, antiperspirants stop you from sweating. Deodorants are going to be there to cover up the odor if and when it shows up. And to further confuse you, you're also going to see antiperspirant deodorants. These do both. They stop you from sweating and they cover up any odor. The big thing with natural deodorants is that they should have simplified ingredients so when you read the back, you actually understand what you're putting on your body. Now, many of them are going to say that they've got no aluminum in them and we go through, they're going to see they're hypoallergic, which basically means that if you've got sensitive skin, this is for you. They're also going to say they're paraben free, PG free and fragrance free. So, if they're fragrance free, how are they covering up the smell? Well, a lot of them are going to use charcoal. They're going to use baking soda type ingredients that basically go in there and neutralize odor. And if you want my recommendation for the best natural deodorant on the market, well, stick around. I'm going to reveal it a little bit later in the video. And if you're super curious, then just go into the description of today's video. I'll link to it right down there. Now, after saying all this, you're probably wondering, Antonio, that's great information, but why would I stop wearing deodorant, especially when there's natural options out there? Well, let me explain. So, the reason I stopped using deodorant is I wanted to give myself a baseline. I wanted to see, okay, how bad is my body odor if I don't use anything and then I'll be able to measure the effectiveness of all these deodorants. But here's the thing that happened. After a month of not using deodorant, I was very surprised to realize I don't smell. Now, I take that back. I can smell. But if I shower in the morning, if I put on clean clothes, I found that at the end of the day, I wasn't smelling that bad. And guess what? I would just repeat the process. I would shower, put on clean clothes, and I began to wonder, why do I need to use deodorant if I actually don't have an odor issue? And I went really deep down the rabbit hole to figuring out why in the world did we even start using deodorant? You see, it turns out about 150 years ago, women were targeted, basically their insecurities, and they were told to start wearing deodorant basically to cover up the odor. It was a straight up marketing ploy. Now, men in deodorant, they didn't even bother with us because guess what? Smelling like a man was actually viewed as a good thing. But in the 1930s, something happened. Some marketing execs, they looked at these numbers and they said, you know what? We are missing out on half the market. So, in 1935, they really started to ramp up. You know what? Guys need to start wearing deodorant. They've got to cover up that BO, that smell. It is not good to smell like a man. Now, gents, I got to admit, there's a lot of us with a manly, manly smell that is downright foul. But there are also millions, hundreds of millions of men that actually don't stink, don't smell bad at all. 
Seriously, there's a gene, ABCC11, that apparently East Asians, almost all Koreans, and a good number of Europeans have this gene and it actually makes it so their armpits do not smell. So, if you think about it, there are millions of men out there conditioned to wear deodorant and they don't even need it. They don't even smell bad. And don't even get me started with what the FDA requires these guys to actually do. So, for a regular antiperspirant to be classified as an antiperspirant, it doesn't have to fully stop you from sweating. It just needs to reduce sweating by 20%. Extra strength, 30%. So, think about that. You've got, you're still sweating quite a bit. These things aren't even fully doing their job. Now, did I go a full year without using any deodorant, any antiperspirant? The answer is no. I would still use a natural deodorant whenever I was traveling, whenever I'm going to be getting up on stage. Anytime I think I'm going to be sweating, I'm going to be putting in a 16 hour day and I'm going to be around other people. In that case, yes, I would use deodorant. But what I realized the big thing was overcoming the mindset early on because I was so used to always putting on the odor. I usually put on quite a bit and then I realized, you know what? I don't need this stuff. So, what if you sweat a lot? What if you have body odor? What are your natural options? So, first up, the obvious one. How many times a day are you showering? I found that I was showering twice a day. Why? Well, in the morning, I like to wake up with a shower but I would work out again in the afternoons and because I was breaking up the time period in which bacteria can grow in my body, I was basically preventing that BO from ever even appearing. So, what am I talking about? If you don't know, basically when you sweat as a man, there are lipids and proteins, things in your sweat that bacteria latches onto, eats and then it emits basically that foul odor. So, by showering and using soap once every 24 hours, you naturally break up that bacteria growth cycle. Now, what about clothing? Gentlemen, I've been an advocate for years of undershirts. Undershirts, when worn under your dress shirt, they are going to do a great job of being that barrier that catches the sweat, protects and guess what? Twice a day, if need be, you can actually change out that undershirt and remember, never wear an undershirt two days in a row. And let's not forget your diet. Have you ever had asparagus and then go to the bathroom 15 minutes later? What do you notice? Your urine smells. There are things that you can eat that can actually give off a really just bad odor. Common culprits that can make your skin smell bad. Guys, we're talking things like red meat, fish, curry, onions, garlic, all of these have been shown to cause actually body odor. Again, it depends on the person. Some people, it won't even bother but other ones, this can really give off a bad smell. And like I said, gents, most days I'm not wearing a deodorant but I know a lot of you guys, every single day, you've got to go into the factory. Every single day, you're around a lot of other people and you want to smell good because smelling good gives you confidence. At the same time, you don't want to basically use any aluminum, anything on your armpits which is going to go in and block the pores. So, guys, look for a natural deodorant. Vitamin here, we've got you covered and I am linking to us down in the description with the best deal you're going to find on the web. And if the deodorant's not enough, I've also got my natural clean package in which we're going to recommend a soap that you can use every single day and it's not going to irritate the skin. We've got a body scrub which is amazing and will make you feel refreshed. So, guys, if you're dealing with odor, if you want to smell great and you want to do all this naturally, go check out Vitamin. I'm linking to us down in the description. This is my company. I stand behind what we sell 100% money back guarantee, free shipping in the United States and Australia. Guys, go check us out. I'm linking to us down in the description. Now, gents, another option to reduce the smell of your armpits is to shave your armpits. Me, I didn't go that far but I cover in this video why you should consider shaving your armpits or maybe not. Go check out this video right here, guys, and you'll see the pros and cons to shaving your pits.